Hey everyone and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards and this is a recipe demo of shellfish stock. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. There are a number of techniques you can use to intensify the flavor and I'll talk about them towards the end of the video. For now though, I start this batch with melting a tablespoon or two of butter to help extra flavor out of the lobster and shrimp shells. It's best to break up the shells so you increase the surface area of shells to butter and eventually water, again, increasing the flavor of the stock. Stir in the shells with the butter and let it simmer for a few minutes. This is optional and frankly, it's a little tedious because I need to remove the shells to sweat the onions. While this cooks, I'll slice the onions and leeks. There's no set rules for this part. If you have shallots, use those. The onion is pretty standard, but I'm throwing in the leek simply because I have it. I also have some frozen chopped celery and carrots to throw in. So after a few minutes, remove the shells and throw in the onions and leeks and celery and carrots. It's about one stalk of celery and one carrot. I'll let that thaw and cook and I'll smash a couple of garlic cloves to throw in there as well and a bay leaf always a bay leaf or two. Once the vegetables are softened and even slightly browned, add in some white wine. Whatever you have, whether that be a couple tablespoons or half a cup. Another thing I keep stocked in my freezer is various measurements of white and red wine. And since we made blue best, we now have frozen cubes of pastis. So let the wine deglaze the pan, scraping up brown bits, bits, which always contribute to a deeper flavor. Now we'll add the shells back in, give them a good stir and some extra crunching. Oh, and this is one lobster tail and the shells from one pound of shrimp. I also happen to have a pound of cod bones. I started to collect the bones to make fish stock, but it's been impossible to find fish heads. So it looks like my goal of making fish stock is not gonna happen. And stocks are all about clean, cleaning out your freezer. So throw whatever you have in here. So we'll sweat the shells and bones and aromatics to get the gelatin to seep out of the bones before adding in the water. So cover the pot and let it stand for eight to 10 minutes. All of this is over medium heat, by the way. And here you can see that little bit of orange on the fish and that's the fat coming out. So the sweating is working. And the bones get softer as they cook, so I can crunch them up more too. Making stock is about squeezing as much flavor and nutrients from the shells and bones as possible. And then crunching up the bones will increase the surface area of flavor inducing ingredients to the water, which is gonna carry the flavor. With things crunched up, we'll add the water. I'm using four cups here, but you should use however much you need to cover your ingredients. Now bring it to a strong simmer. All the recipes I looked at using fish bones included an element of scooping off the foam that rises during the simmering process. I don't think it's necessary for shellfish, but I can't imagine it hurts. Since I had cod bones in there, I will scoop off the foam. When making shellfish and fish stock, it doesn't take near as long as like chicken stock, which can simmer for hours. So after another 10 minutes of a strong simmer, we can remove the big pieces and then strain the stock. To squeeze out every morsel, take a chinois, which is a super fine mesh strainer and a pestle and push through the extra juice. This is a specialty tool, so you can use a fine mesh strainer lined with a dampened cheesecloth and use the back of a spoon, like a big spoon, maybe a big wooden spoon, to push through the extra juice. I do think this is a necessary element because I just kind of like squeezing out every last little element. Now measure out your stock however you think you'll use it. I plan to use most of mine for risotto, so I'm letting it cool in smaller jars also so I can defat it more easily, but I'll freeze it as a three cup unit and a couple of half cup units so that I can make a sauce for pasta or ravioli. So my broth is super orange because of the cod oil. And I did scoop that out once it cooled, like I defatted that part out because it has a bitter taste and I was afraid it would affect any dish I used the stock in. 
Now, some notes on upping the fussiness of simple stock. You can keep this as basic as possible by lightly browning onions and celery and carrots or literally whatever else you have, and then deglazing the pan with your wine. And then you add in more aromatics like the garlic and herbs, stir in the shells and the water, let it simmer together for like 20 minutes. Then you strain it, press it out and be done. You can also get super fussy with it, like crunching up all of your shells and then roasting, especially if you have lobster or crab shells, roast them in the oven to intensify the flavor and then sweating the shrimp shells and butter, even processing the shells in a blender or a food processor to break it up into a paste before adding it to a pot. There is a culinary and cultural background to all of those methods and they are options you can consider. If that seems overwhelming to you, you're probably not ever gonna make the effort to save your shells and bones for stock, and you'll miss out on a super nutritious and a ridiculously flavorful accessory. So start simple, get accustomed to using homemade shellfish stock, and then you can increase the complexity of making the stock as you want. Just know that you can always keep it quick and basic. The entire process should never take more than 30 minutes once it's in the pot. Overcooking shellfish and fish stock will make it bitter. And that defeats the whole purpose of the exercise, right? So regardless of the details, shellfish stock adds a lovely depth and a brine to your dishes. You get all that amazing iodine. It's worth keeping discarded shells in the freezer, even if they've already been cooked cooked shrimp shells still have something to offer. Now that's another note. You can make stock with cooked shells, not just raw ones. The lobster shells I used, in fact, were left over from the bouillabaisse. That is it for this demo of shellfish stock. Get the ingredient list below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash shellfish stock. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards. Thanks for watching.